Right, this one looks a little different, but it is a logarithmic equation nonetheless. If you have more than one term on one side, just like grade 8 solving equations, you're going to have to deal with that first. Um, for these, uh, this is log base 2 of x minus 2. Don't mistake this for log 2. It's not a number. This is log base 2. This is 2 is little here, right? Log base 2 of that. You can't expand it. It's not something to expand, right? You can combine, since these are all logarithms of the same base, you can combine the ones on the left side. Log of this and log of this added together is the same as log base 2 of x minus 2. Maybe we'll use some big brackets here. Times x. And... We still have that on the other side. Okay, those two things multiplied. Line it up here a bit, sorry. So in other words, you could write it as log base 2 of x squared minus 2x. Log base 2 of 3. Now you have log base 2 uh, to get rid of and to get at the variable, so you need to do anti-log base 2, and it actually works out nicely because it's log base 2 on both sides. And you can just leave it as, or you just end up with x squared minus 2x equals 3. Now that's a quadratic that you solve in grade 10, grade 11. Follow the same procedure as you've done in the past. I'm going to move the 3 over there. Uh, try factoring this first. This factors to x minus 3, x plus 1 equals 0. So in other words, x is 3 or negative 1. Now, if you look down here, if you're looking ahead, you wonder why one of them is crossed out. We need to think about what the restrictions are here. What restrictions are on that variable? If you look at the original equation, you've got log of x minus 2 and you got log of x. Both of those things have to be positive. They can't be 0 or less. So in other words, you got x minus 2 has to be greater than 0 and x has to be greater than 0. So whichever one of those is more restrictive is going to dictate what x has to be. This means x has to be greater than 2. That's it, right? The number, the, the solutions you have have to be greater than 2. This one is not greater than 2, right? The other one's fine. This one's fine. This one's no good. You have to reject that. It comes from the fact that you've reduced this logarithmic equation that does have restrictions. Only certain things are true. x has to be bigger than 2. You've changed it to a quadratic where x could be anything. There are no restrictions on it. In, in doing this uh, anti-log of both sides, you, you kind of lose that restriction, so you end up with a solution. This is called an extraneous root, extraneous solution. It's a solution that comes that isn't part of it. All right. Anyways, uh, I would like you to try some of these other ones here. I'm going to pause this temporarily. Now, I just realized that that's a pause for me, but not for you. Uh, anyways, you have two more, uh, two more kind of standard logarithmic equations to solve here. I'm going to leave this one up to you. Remember, I'll, I'll just give you the hint that you got to use your logarithm laws there to simplify that. You can only, you can only do the anti-logarithm of both sides once you have a single logarithm. Logarithm of this equals logarithm of that. Then you can, anti-log both sides. You can't anti-log it right off the bat here and just do this, right? You can't cross off all of those. Just the same way that you can't if you have, let's say, the Pythagorean theorem here. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can't just square root each thing individually. You need to, if you're going to, if you're going to take the square root of both sides of an equation, you need to square root the entire thing, right? Like that's okay. You can anti-log the entire side, 
But before you do that, it's not going to be useful unless you combine these together. So what you, I mean, what you do end up with here is you can write logarithm of those things multiplied. 2x squared. What do we have? Uh, minus 3x minus 2x minus 5x plus 3. Right, I think. And on the other side, you have this. 2x squared minus 5. Once you have a single logarithm like that, then you can anti-log both sides. And since there's a logarithm on both sides, it just you're no logs anywhere and no exponential expressions to evaluate. This one's actually going to reduce to a linear equation because you have 2x squared on both sides, which you can uh, subtract. Uh, so you're going to have minus 5x and minus 8. X equals 8 fifths. <clears throat> you think about the restrictions. You could look at all the restrictions here and decide what what x can be. I didn't ask you about the restrictions here, but this one says x has to be greater than 1. This one says, well, 2x minus 3 has to be greater than 0, or x has to be greater than 3 halves. This one actually is bizarre with this. Um, x squared has to be, uh, well, 2x squared minus 5 has to be greater than 0. So x squared has to be greater than 5 halves. X has to be, I don't want to get too complicated here, but X has to be greater than whatever the square root of 5 halves is, or X has to be less than negative square root of 5 halves. If you're, if, if, if this is making you go, um, well, then don't worry too much about that. Okay, that's a complicated restriction to think about, which is probably why I didn't ask you about it in the first place. Uh, this last one here. You're going to have to go through. This is tricky because you're going to have to reject one. You need to think about what the restrictions are. Now notice that this is kind of turned around here. I would like you to go through and do that. Remember, you need to use your log laws first. This is not a logarithmic expression over here. So when you anti-log both sides, you're going to have a, something to evaluate over there. But you need to combine that together first, multiply that out. You have two over there. Eventually, once you multiply that out and you anti log both sides, that's going to be 16 over there. Okay, so don't lose track of that. You should end up with that. Think about the restrictions. Uh, ponder this question here. And. What you need to do now is you need to work on some of the practice. Okay, the rest of the questions here are some some higher level thinking questions. If you're if you're fine with this and you're ready to try some of these, by all means, try some of these. If you're not, do some practice. This doesn't work just by watching me do it here. Okay, do some practice practice booklet. I would say for. Uh, what day? Thursday? When you come in Thursday, you need to understand everything up to, I'll write it up here, understand up to and including tutorial 2.5, okay? You have the rest of the class to work on all of that. All right, I will see you Thursday.